Hey everyone, so today is going to be one of those videos that I just kept putting off and putting off and putting off, but I need to put it out there, and that is that we are no longer vegan. About six months ago, I started having a lot of hair loss, along with multiple other symptoms. One being a huge factor as well was brain fog. So between the brain fog and the hair loss, I was just, I knew that something wasn't right with my body and I just did not know what it was. So I dove deep into the Googler and just started researching, researching, researching. Got on YouTube, watched a bunch of videos and was just type, I just would kind of type in my symptoms and then see what would pop up. Here's my little list of symptoms that I had. Hair loss, irritability, um, anxiety, depression. I really felt this a lot with normal small little things that happened through the day I was just like letting them build up and it was turning into a whole thing um, really bad sleeping patterns I would wake up exhausted like physically felt like I could not pull myself out of bed by like four o'clock I had energy and I would have energy and wanted to be up super late and it was like I, and I just could not in the mornings my brain fog was ten times worse um, and I just couldn't get with it. Brain fog, how I would like to describe it would be, it was almost like my vision, like this is so weird, but it was almost like my brain was swollen. So my vision was almost kind of like blurry and slow. So when I would like look at things, it was like I had to just kind of like squint and like, like what is that? Or like what's going on? And I, like I wasn't processing it fast. It was, it was a very weird experience, but Anyway, so that was my brain fog and then my hair loss. I actually initially thought it was just overly stress related because it was it started close to the time that I started homeschooling and I had a lot going on. So um but with the hair loss, I was losing probably 3 to 4 times the amount I would on a normal shed every day. I mean, my pillow would be covered in it. Like it's it was not a normal amount of hair loss. I've been taking pictures and logging that. If you guys are interested in seeing my hair transformation because it's been a work in progress, um, including the curly girl method and um, my trimming methods and all these kind of things. So if you're interested in that, leave a comment and maybe I can devote like a whole video to that. But anyway, so those were my main symptoms and the Googler told me that I had adrenal fatigue. And so I was like, okay, well, how do I fix it? Number one thing that I did, I removed stimulants from my life. Physical stimulants as well as chemical stimulants. So I did not have any coffee for two months, okay? I did not have any processed sugar. Um, like now, obviously, the natural sugars that are in like fruit and stuff like that I left in but even my carbs I tried to cut back on my carbs as well just to not have the amount of sugar because sugar acts as a stimulant within your body and I was really trying to reduce stimulants within my body so um, and the other one was the physical stimulants which were for me social events like I love like I'm a social butterfly so when I get around people like it's a like it's a high for me on some level but what it really is is it's my adrenaline spiking because I'm excited about having people over and excited about everything so I did not go anywhere did not do anything which was perfect considering it was right in the middle of the coronavirus and so it kind of worked out that was the number one thing I did I would remove stimulants number two I replaced fitness with mental health this is not for everybody this was for me because for me fitness became a checklist a I have to do this because um, pushing myself like physically too far so I replaced those moments of strenuous exercise with recovering type movements I started doing more yoga I went for walks I would get up in the morning and instead of having my cup of coffee I would make a cup of hot decaf tea and I would walk and I would try to get in the sunlight I would go walking a lot of times barefoot to get like grounding um, I have a whole video on grounding it's old but I have it it's out there third thing I did was I stopped my schedule no more YouTube planning I also stopped homeschooling for about a month we did not do any school if I if she wanted to read or do something more educational but not curriculum related we did that but I did not follow a schedule I did not do anything like that fourth thing I did was I rested 
and I feel like this was so important and I so needed this but I literally every time the kids would lay down for a nap I'd lay down if they were occupied watching TV or doing something and I felt exhausted I would just lay on the couch like close my eyes and just lay there like even if I wasn't doing anything I would just lay there Another thing that I did to help myself recover from adrenal fatigue was I started supplementing. So I actually took an adrenal complex that I ordered off of Amazon, um, but it was a combination of like B vitamins as well as um, some adaptogen herbs. A few of them I wrote down, rhodiola, um, ashwagandha. These are just a few of the um, adaptogen herbs that were in this complex. I was taking vitamin D every day and vitamin C and with vitamin C your body actually excretes this so fast that I was on like an hourly supplementation for vitamin C. I also started incorporating some omega 3s and I did probiotics. I'm actually going to be posting a video on my sauerkraut. I will be doing a what I eat in a day for my next video and that was a big thing that I started to just really eat a lot more of was my sauerkraut and I started drinking more kombucha. Last thing that I did was I started eating meat and dairy again. If somebody was to put a label on our diet it would still be considered plant-based because really it's only like 10% of our diet that is coming from animal products. So the reason I decided to add meat back into my diet was kind of like a trial and error. And I felt like I wasn't missing anything in my diet, but something was off. So I had to just start from scratch and just like I had something had to change for me. So during that time, I actually reached out to a few people that had actually experienced similar experiences as myself. Um, and they did recommend as well trying to introduce some meat and um, animal products back into my, my diet. I also did do a lot of research on um, Weston Price. I mean, there's some good evidence on both sides. So for us, it was just something that I had, like I just reintroduced it. Another big reason why I introduced animal products back into my diet was because of fat soluble vitamins. I never really put a big focus on fat soluble vitamins versus water soluble. And four of the main vitamins that you get out of animal products that are fat soluble are vitamin A, D, and K. Um, and so I just felt like adding some of this back into my diet, it would almost be more of like a time release vitamin versus the high amounts of vitamins that I'm just like peeing out really fast when they are water soluble, if that makes sense. In conclusion, um, removing stress was the biggest part of everything and removing stress is life changing. Um, limiting my daily activities and slowing down just a little bit I think has really made the biggest difference. I'm not going to say that meat changed everything or not drinking caffeine changed everything but it really has changed my lifestyle now. Um, I don't drink coffee every morning and if I do it's like half coffee half water um, with almond milk and I do think that going vegan was like such a beneficial part of our life because I really feel like it helped me to put my focus more on the micronutrients and things that a lot of people are missing like high amounts of fiber so it was super beneficial but it was also like an era of my life and I feel like now I'm coming into like more of what I think is a balance where I do have that 10% of meat or dairy like if I want to have a salad I'll have a huge salad and I'll have some feta cheese on it. Like I love feta cheese and I was really missing feta cheese to be honest. But yeah, so another thing I wanted to mention in this whole recovery thing, I started a garden. Yeah. And I think next is going to be chickens. Hold me to it. I was going to say don't hold me to it, but hold me to it because I really want to get chickens. So I had an actually a really successful garden. For it to be my first year doing a garden, it has been really successful. And I think a big part of that is because we've been composting. Um, you know I'm a huge advocate for composting so if you haven't already started composting you guys need to compost um, but yeah so we compost and we just tilled that back into the soil to kind of just um, what's the word condition the soil and put nutrients back into the soil and we actually all we also um, tilled the soil two times in preparation before we started planting everything so that was the only thing I had to say okay let's go look at the garden so this is my little plot. I actually planted sunflowers on the outside and these ones right here are like 12 foot tall. It is absolutely insane. They did so good and they're so beautiful. I don't know if they'll actually put off seeds though. These are wild sunflowers so we'll see. So when you first walk in along this side, 
I have all spaghetti squash and they're actually doing so good right now. You can see they're not quite ready. They have to be, but this is in reference to the size of my hand. Like it's huge. Um, but they have to be yellow, I think, before you can harvest them. Um, so they've kind of just all took up right here and I made like a little trundle for them to climb across. Um, so that's spaghetti squash here. And then all down the center here is all just tomatoes. So this one is aroma tomato. These are better boys, or I think that's what you call them, better boys or big boys or something, which I actually have one ready. And then these four, one, two, three, four here, heirloom tomato. And that's what I also have on the outside. Zucchini, more tomatoes right here. Um, and then I have more tomatoes. These are heirloom again, and I planted these ones a little bit later. Uh, bell pepper, heirloom tomato, heirloom tomato, and then I have cucumbers all in this corner. They start here and they wrap all the way around. These guys keep popping up everywhere because I had the kids in here with me when I was planting, and so I have peas everywhere. These are just field peas. I guess that's what you call them. Also wanted to mention the ground to help keep the weeds down, which has really done such a good job. I just laid down a bunch of hay, and I did it pretty thick, but... It really has made a difference and I, ha I don't have to come out here and weed it all the time and then these are all cherry tomatoes here and as you can tell I need to come out here and pick and I also have been over watering you can see right there how that one's kind of busted means I'm giving them too much water see how I have no leaves on this tomato hornworms and I got a bunch of them in my garden like about a week ago actually there's a baby one but if I can find a big one I'll show you but there's a little baby one and if I can find a huge one I will definitely show you guys anyway these are all the cherries and then down here I have peppers so I have some cayenne peppers um, cayenne again and then jalapeno here jalapeno jalapeno and then another cherry tomato it's so funny how I grew these at different times and different methods and they look so different these ones are more full are, are more short and like the leaves aren't as full but they have so many more tomatoes and then these ones have a lot fewer tomatoes and I think they cross pollinated with some of my better boys since they're like right beside them because the cherry tomatoes are really big and then all right here is my field piece and you can see them actually I think they're almost ready to be honest so that is my garden thank you for coming and taking a tour be sure to watch next week because I'm going to do a full what I eat in a day and you're going to be able to kind of see where I have found struck that balance between that 10% animal product and still getting all the veggies and fruits and all the deliciousness in our diet. Be sure to click one of these videos if you're interested in seeing another what I eat in a day or just day in the life of. See you next time.